In part one of this video lesson, we talked about how we can categorize waves by how they are generated. We had mechanical waves and we had electromagnetic waves. Now we're going to look at how we can categorize waves on the basis of how the individual particles move. The first type is transverse waves. In a transverse wave, the particles oscillate at 90 degrees to the direction that the wave itself travels. This is probably something you've learned or memorized for your GCSE physics exam and said that since the word transverse starts with a letter T, there's right angles in the letter T, so the two things are perpendicular. But let's look at what this actually represents. We know that by definition, a wave has the ability to transfer energy without transporting matter. It's the pattern of the wave that carries this energy. Another name for a wave pattern is envelope. I imagine an envelope wrapping around the particles, just like a wave pattern does. In the case of this transverse wave, the envelope is moving to the right. The particles are oscillating up and down. I've drawn a red particle and a blue particle in a transverse wave just to show that these are two different particles in the same wave. You see how each particle moves vertically but traces out a sine wave as the wave pattern propagates to the right. So even though the energy is being transferred to the right in the same direction that the wave pattern travels, the particles do not move horizontally at all. They simply oscillate vertically about the equilibrium position. The maximum displacement is known as the crest, the minimum displacement is known as the trough. And in between, where the displacement is zero, we have the equilibrium. Next up, we have longitudinal waves. You would already know that in a longitudinal wave, the particles oscillate parallel to the wave. But what you might not have been told in GCSE is that a longitudinal wave still has a crest and it still has a trough in each oscillation. Except we call them a compression and a rarefaction, respectively. If we draw the side view of a slinky making a longitudinal wave, it might be easier to spot the region where the wave is squashed and where the wave is stretched. But how do you measure the wavelength on a longitudinal wave? In part 3 of this video lesson, I'll answer exactly that and go through different types of graphs for waves. Thanks for watching!